So the hypothetical uh, setup of the Earth with the moon um, in a plane with the equator is not real life. There's the moon at an angle to the rotating Earth, so it is not going to be as straightforward. The moon actually oscillates along this 28 and a half degree um, declination away from that equatorial plane throughout the month. And so the bulges are going to oscillate with, the bulge is oscillating along with the moon, giving us the more irregular patterns in the uh, graph of the tides, those ones that are um, diurnal and semi-diurnal. Okay, so in real life, instead of having just the perfect um, patterns, it looks more like this. This is a line showing position of the wave crest in an instant of time, the same time of day. So the wave of the tides is not a real perfect pattern. There are micro tides, which are really small. I don't like her nose hitting me. Really small tides, a real short, um, a small difference between highs and the lows. <laughs> South Carolina on the the beach there's a mesotidal, so kind of a medium tide, the low tide here, and um, oh God, you hear this dog? Semi-diurnal tides in South Carolina. There's semi-diurnal tides. You have a low tide. Low tide following winter. Storm surge erosion. Yeah, there's a low tide and then um, this erosion that's happening on the shore phase here is because there is a winter storms and the surge of that winter storm is calling, causing erosion. I can't get anything done because the dogs need to be pet and the children are screaming. Okay. This is an ebb tide delta. An ebb tide means that the water is going out, right? So uh, there's an inlet in the center of the image, and on either side are barrier islands, and the water is going out in the ebb tide, out to sea. And it's creating what we call the ebb tide delta. So the sandbars offshore are the ebb tide delta. The bay fills slowly with the rising tide, empties quickly through the inlet between the barrier islands, transporting sand offshore. Semi-diurnal tide. This is um, high tide, the winter profile on the stable beach in Long Island, New York. So this is a pretty stable beach. Um, and high tide line would be where these sticks are. This is the winter profile. There's a lot of sand on the beach. All right. Life in the intertidal zone. Life in the intertidal zone. The... Um, Organisms in the intertidal zone are specifically adapted to be there. You can imagine there's lots of energy that um, the ebbs and the um, flood, flood tides coming in and out. There's a lot of water moving through that system. So many of these organisms you see here have a low profile and they're also attached to the their sessile organisms. They don't move like oysters or... Um, some of these other ones. Then the other ones like the sea stars are, are low to the ground and they have suction cups and they are suctioned to the seafloor or they bury themselves a little bit into the um, substrate. So these are organisms that live in that tidal zone. Uh, here's life that gets exposed at low tides. Um, along with my face. These little um, uh, sand um, fleas 
They, those are in the swash zone, right? When the uh, waves come up, you'll see them rolling around in the water. Then we have um, more like barnacle organisms that can be exposed. And then um, many organ animals understand the spring tides. So uh, animals will um, reproduce, like the sea turtles. They will... Um, this mama sea turtles climbed way up the beach to lay their eggs like on the edge of the dunes because they know the spring tides can be pretty high. And um, yeah, that's it. We made it to the end. <laughs>